A recent medical study has confirmed that which many of us suspected. Working in City Hall can be very good for you. Everybody has known that it can be good for a person's economic health, and even good for the well-being of a brother, an uncle, and all of the offsprings that can be enrolled on a payroll. But now it has been found that working in City Hall is good for a person's physical health. It can give you a longer life. A study conducted by the Harold Brunn Institute of Cardiovascular Research, San Francisco, shows that city employees are much less likely to suffer heart attacks than are people in many other occupations. This might surprise the casual visitor to City Hall because so many people in the building appear to have been stricken by heart attacks or something that renders them motionless. At a city council meeting, for instance, several aldermen always look as if they have already been administered the last rites. But if you watch them closely, you will see that their breathing is regular. And eventually, when the day's labor is done, they will open their eyes, rise slowly, put on their hats, and go home to rest. Their resistance to heart attacks probably explains why so many people in local government offices appear to be of advanced age. Even the younger ones soon learn to move very slowly, take short steps, and drop off into naps. Many men in their 70s and 80s have occupied the top political offices and leadership positions in the machine. At one time, the youngest member of the Cook County Board had qualified for Social Security. The Board's regular meetings never began until an aide held a mirror near the lips of the commissioners. In one respect, the advanced age of Chicago's politicians was puzzling because it defied one of the long-accepted rules for having a healthy heart getting regular exercise. You wouldn't think there would be any health benefits in shaking a few hands, waving a finger while saying hi, kid, or even lifting a heavy wallet. But the Brunn Institute's study seems to explain that. The study found that there are basically two kinds of people, which it calls A people and B people. The A people are those who are always on the go, under pressure, nervous, pushing, trying to excel, worrying, fretting, nervously twitching, impatient, aggressive. These kinds of people keep the ambulance crews busy. On the other hand, the B people have a more leisurely approach to life. They take things in stride. They don't get nervous. They're patient about solving problems. They are the me-worry people. City employees are found to be extreme examples of easygoing bee people. This finding won't surprise anyone who has watched a city crew calmly studying a chuck hole in the street, wondering when it will miraculously repair itself, or gather together to ponder the sight of a dead tree, calculating what the odds are that maybe it will just fall off on its own, fall over on its own. At the other extreme, the study found are people in my line of work who are considered among the twitchingest of A people and are foolish to plan more than one vacation ahead. One reason for this may be that newsmen spend so much of their professional lives observing the eye-popping antics of those in and around City Hall. One day it will be the amazing assessor's office, and then the remarkable racetrack stock, and the incomparable indictments, and then the colossal cash-filled closet. The constant excitement gets to be too much for a body to stand. Although the report doesn't say so, it would not surprise me if most of the fretful A people are those who pay the taxes to finance the leisurely but profitable long lives of the B types. Working in City Hall may be fine, but working for City Hall can become backbreaking. And so that's uh, Mike Royko's health report in this afternoon's Daily News.